My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to a very special San Francisco edition of Bad Money. Welcome to Kramer. America. I'll be able to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate context. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now, this market is caught in a titanic battle between chat GPT and GLP-1s. And today, the winner was chat GPT, with the Dow dipping 158 points, S&P declining 0.15%, and the tech-laden NASDAQ advancing 0.09%. Of course, there's a lot more to this market than just tech versus healthcare. But right now, you can learn a lot from chat GPT, the way many people first learned about generative AI. And you can tell from my interviews in San Francisco that the revolutionary GLP-1s for weight loss and diabetes are driving a ton of R&D from so many different drug companies that, that know they have to make these drugs because this could be the biggest category of drugs in history. We came out here this week camping out with the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference to find out the latest and greatest in healthcare, only to discover that nearly everybody in the industry either has a GLP-1 one business, or they're trying to develop a better weight loss drug, or helping to make sure you get the drug, or playing defense against this whole class of GLP-1 revolutionary pharma products. Meanwhile, tech companies at CES, the old consumer electronics show, occurring simultaneously, are telling people that the thing you might know uh, as ChatGPT is really all about trying to help businesses reach the right people to sell to. I mean, this contrast. It brings me to the great conundrum of GLP versus GPT. The people at this healthcare conference are using generative artificial intelligence to analyze data as part of their mission to develop new life saving drugs or remove the drudgery of counting pills or filling out form after form for prescription. As for the people who are using AI in every other industry, well, today we got some nice moves in two of the Magnificent Seven, Amazon and Alpha, but they're all about reaching people to sell them more stuff. Not exactly curing cancer, stopping heart attacks, or making people thinner, or stopping diabetes. Yet, what's winning right now? If you look at today's action, it's clear that more effective advertising is what Wall Street wants. Today, TV Callum published this ad buyer survey. I hope it's closely watched. It's a great tool for identifying the top trends in advertising, and they made it clear that the Internet's the only reliable way these days to reach the right people. Their chief conclusion, listen to this, quote, Google search offers highest return on investment slash best measurement, quote, and uh, YouTube, quote, quote, should see slight share gain in 23 to 25, in part because Google, quote, leads adoption of gen AI tools. In other words, Google's got the stuff. The stock soared on this endorsement. How about Amazon? The same TV Cowan survey says Amazon's, quote, expected to gain ad budget share and is emerging as a meaningful platform outside Google and Meta for ad buyers. Also, 70 percent of ad buyers expect to advertise on Prime Video, end quote. Amazon stock had a huge move on this news, which brings me to something that can make investing tricky. People always wonder, how the heck could there be so many life-saving innovations coming from generative AI, supported by Kramer Fave and NVIDIA, by the way, which was a big presence here as well at CES, but nobody seems to care when it comes to the paltry valuations of what used to be among the most highly valued companies in the world, drug stocks. I think the answer is a crass one. It's because what really drives stocks is commerce. And if Alphabet and Meta and Amazon can drive more advertising commerce, they can make more money, and so do their shareholders. Regardless of how many lives the company saved at this conference, is that unfair to you? Uh, could targeting the right consumer really be more important than saving the consumer's life? No, of course not. But investing is rarely about what's important in the human sense. It's about making money. And right now, analyzing data more efficiently for targeting ads is worth more than analyzing the data to figure out how to get people to live longer or healthier lives. Don't despair, though. I think there's a way we can have a tech and healthcare intersection, a cake and eat it too, leading to a best of all possible world situation. I want to hand this idea over to JP Morgan, of course, which hosted the conference, and put out a piece about recommending none other than, yes, NVIDIA, the number one name in AI this morning. It's a big reason why its stock rallied 1.7% today to another 
new all-time high. JP Morgan says NVIDIA's healthcare vertical is, quote, already a $1 billion plus business driven by the increasing computational demand for AI drug discovery, genomics, patient diagnostics, medical devices, and robotics, end quote. Yep, they believe that healthcare is now a top three vertical within NVIDIA's data center business. And the company's work will be at the heart of what they call, quote, a massive expansion in computer-aided drug discovery, end quote. I get the sense that Amgen seems to have the best grasp of what NVIDIA can do for them. They came up with the idea of marrying an NVIDIA supercomputer to one of the world's largest human genome data sets at their genetics headquarters in Reykjavik, Iceland. I like what Roche had to say about AI. Teresa Graham, head of pharma for Roche, told us that artificial intelligence is helping them identify new targets faster, test them more quickly, and really figure out how you can increase the predictability and lower the cost of drug development. Normally, drug discovery cycles take a very long time, but with AI, Graham says they can work a lot faster. Sencora, that drug distributor whom you will hear from tomorrow, uses AI to keep track of inventory. Hey, listen, it's a tough job when you have $20 billion in pharma products going through your doors every day. Medtronic uses it to watch colonoscopies in real time, ensuring that nothing dangerous gets missed. It's odd. We think of all the electronics that now go into devices like those from Abbott Labs. And we think of all the electronics that are involved in non-invasive surgery. It's terrific to see how much healthcare has been revolutionized by digitization. But not to diss anyone I saw out here in our whirlwind tour. The fact is, electronics is no match for computer science these days. If you're trying to reach the right customers, the targets, not just of all the people who have no interest, as well as the few who do, AI can figure out how to get to that person, what that person might want, and how to please that person with the right ad that makes them want to take action. In some ways, it's incredibly pedestrian, a better marketing mousetrap. But most companies waste millions upon millions of dollars showing ads to people who aren't the least bit interested in the product. Why not just spend an extra million bucks and just reach the right people who might pull the trigger? So here's the bottom line. Yes, an Abbott Labs pacemaker is an incredible, life-saving electric technology device. But the computer science behind an Amazon or YouTube ad is worth a heck of a lot more when it comes to the stock market, at least for the moment. And here at Mad Money, we want both healthy hearts and fat wallets. Let's go to Brian in Oregon. Brian. Mr. Kramer, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. What's happening, Brian? Hey, I know the trust has invested in Boeing in the past. I've stuck with it through thick and thin. Everyone's losing their mind about this door plug on this one aircraft. It's a big deal, but not a tragedy. Is the reaction ever done? Yes, the answer is, but it can still, because Boeing handles things very ham-handedly, you could probably have another down day. But unless you can come up with a third player besides Boeing and Airbus, then you have to buy Airbus, and I remain. Let's go to Sheila in Tennessee. Sheila. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good, Sheila. How about you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. Can I start by adding my voice to the chorus of small investors who are so grateful for you and so thankful for all of your perspectives and tremendous insight on the market? You're very kind, Sheila. You know, I, I come to work every day and I think, well, I hope I'm helping people. And then you come out and I say, thank you very much. How can I help now? Well, I actually bought some Northrop Grumman stock, uh, NOC, last year, and I've been very pleased with that as an investment. I bought it because not only did I think the stock would go up, but I was hoping it would add to my dividend strategy. And now it, I'm, it's starting to take a bit of a dip, and I'm interested in your perspective on whether I should go ahead and buy some more. I actually think you should. I think it's an incredibly well-run company. But more important, it, it, when we think about where we are in this country and what has to be done to keep us safe and our allies safe, Northrop Grumman is the top three. And I think that down 472, down three bucks today, and you, now down, by the way, a lot from its high of 518. I think you're right to pull the trigger. And I cannot thank you enough for the kind comments. It's terrific. Let's go to Russell in Georgia. Russell. Hey, Jim. Long time no talk. I was on your radio show 20 years ago, and I've been oh appreciative my. of you ever since. I <laughs> can't believe you're on that show. Holy cow. Yeah, that was a hard show to do every day. And I, and I was. And, uh, and you've helped me a ton in my family. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, I took a small position in Hasbro in 2021. It was much higher, obviously. Um, I've been buying it all the way down for my nephew. He's only six years old. We got time. Is has his bro or is has a has been? 
Okay, I think that Hasbro uh, is troubled. I wish I could be more encouraging, but the toy business is incredibly hard. My father was in it selling board games at one point, and I, all I can tell you is, I think it's, I can't tell you patience is a virtue with this one. I think it's a hard stock to own, but thank you for the call and for the radio calls. The technology behind life-saving equipment like an Abbott Labs pacemaker is incredible. But the stock market cares more about the technology behind artificial intelligence to figure out who to sell ads to, because that's where the money's being made right now. Oh, man, money tonight. Pfizer is so much more than just a COVID-19 vaccine company, and I'm getting the latest update from the company that's buying so many important treatments with the company's CEO. Then CBS had a host of announcements yesterday during his presentation at JPMorgan Healthcare Conference. I'm getting into the nitty-gritty with the CEO. Plus, you do not want to miss my exclusive with Regeneron and Abbott Labs. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.